all good now. Um, want to, as always, thank you for joining us today. I want to thank uh, Brother Alan Lavender, uh, Sister Leticia Frey, Reverend Sandy Pace, our wonderful, wonderful audiovisual team in front of and behind the camera uh, for just being so great and always helping us. Also want to um, thank, as always, Dr. Michael A. Cousins Sr., Bishop Philip R. Cousins Sr., and I don't know if uh, Reverend Stephen Cousin, my nephew, will be able to join us today, but want to shout him out. Also want to shout out my brother, uh, my, one of my brothers, Reverend Stephen A. Cousins Sr., who is visiting my dad, so he's off camera, but he can hear us. And want to shout Steve out for, uh, for supporting as always. And again, want to thank you all. And also want to let everybody know when you get a chance, please like and share this post with everybody that you know and that you can. I'm on Facebook now. We've only got a couple of people watching. Want to boost it up, try to get more people to watch. But also, whenever you watch this, we're just glad to have you watch it and be a part of it. So we thank you so, so very much for everything. Um, as always, we'll open up with a word of prayer. So I'll just open us up in prayer today. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity you've given us to come together again. We look forward to this every week, Lord, and we know that you will bless it as you always do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So as we always start off with, Dad and Mike, uh, a little bit of uh, what's going on in your world. What's happening in your world these days? Well, in my world, it's, um, I think we're just getting, dealing with the onset of summer and the town is quiet. And I think the big news uh, that's happened is that, is that school over in Durham, um, they have a so but they, they have a coaching change over there. Uh, but seriously, uh, Coach K, um, although I do not cheer for Duke, uh, he did do some things in terms of uh, social action. Uh, was standing with his players uh, and recognizing the Black Lives Movement. So uh, hats off to him in, in his retirement uh, coming up. And uh, it may be better for us over here that now that he's gone. <laughs> Amen. So that's my world. Absolutely. I, you know, I'm, I um, I watched a little bit of, you know me, and, and y'all know, anybody that knows me, you know, I was born in Duke University Hospital. Um, but that's the only good thing I believe Duke has ever done in life. If I'm a Carolina fan. I'm Tar Heel born, Tar Heel bred. What's the rest, Mike? When I die, I'm Tar Heel dead. That's me, Tar Heel all day long. But um, I, I do, I do respect Coach K. I really do, and uh, wish him well in uh, in everything going on, and um, but respect the work he's done and and off and on and off the court. So seriously, big big props to him, um, and pray his retirement goes well. He's a good man, very good man. Uh, what you got, Dad? Uh, I my concern has been raised. How long will the Democratic Party allow two senators to keep them in jail and gridlock? If we don't, if they don't do something, the Voting Rights Act will be gone. And look at what happened in Georgia, what's happening in Texas, what's happening all over. Somehow. Mansion and Sesima, whatever name, Sesima, Sesima, whatever her name is, have, have to come to grips with reality that you can't live in a fantasy world. And if we don't get the Voting Rights Act passed, do you know what kind of confusion that's going to call? Trump was already talking about he's going to be reinstalled in, our, in August. And do you know the crazy folk, and a lot of them from Cherokee County, Say yeah, he gonna be back in president, all in, in in August, and somehow you know they they, they begin to feature Cherokee County, and we're Dalton in that Dalton that Cherokee County. I think that's I think that's a county over, but it's right next door, and and so uh, they all they're they're featuring folk from from up in that part of Georgia and up going up in Tennessee, and all of them saying yeah, Trump's gonna be back in. Where are we going to stop and think how mind-boggled can people be? And you see what where the, the, the director of, of the movement for reform in the, the Southern Baptist Church more resigned and left, and it's complaining about QAnon going into the churches and the pastors being bombarded by folk who are QAnon believers 
and the pastors are, are, are getting ready to walk away from a lot of their pulpits in the Southern Baptist Church. Where are we headed when these crazy folk are taking up the cultic, cultic attitude and, and folk ways and more ways of folk who remind us of Hitler Germany, who remind us of all of the countries that have ever been under the kind of autocratic rule that, that makes it difficult. Where are we headed? And so many good folk come they just quiet. It ain't gonna say nothing. How long will we allow that to go on? I'm asking the Lord, Lord, how long? How long? How long? Okay, well, and that's that's a good question, Dad, because let's let's just let's dive into that. You know, we we are a um, forward focus. We try to talk about forward and, and being um, focused on things. Well, today, what you just talked about is biblical. You know, the Bible does speak of there being a time where people will just want to hear what satisfies itching ears. Yep. And a lot of the conspiracy theories you hear are just that. So it, it goes, it's in line with the Bible and, and what the Bible says will happen. Problem is, how do you combat it? Because um, oftentimes the person who talks the loudest is the one who's heard. And if you just, you know, it's, it's propaganda. If you keep telling a lie, over and over and over and over again if you keep telling the same lie believe it or not people will begin to believe that lie and that's what the former president is uh doing just keeps lying and lying and lying and people believe the lie so i and it's, and when the church is more so white evangelical church let's just be honest is in the middle of this stuff promoting this QAnon stuff i mean i i don't know what what do you do what what is the church as a whole what do we do Somehow, if if the folk in the church who claim to be Christian can speak up, and when these folk come up, they put in Trump as being the savior to save the world over Jesus Christ. That's what some of the Southern Baptists are saying now. And a couple of them have backed off and said, no, I can't put anybody over Jesus. And But now that's the, the, the part that does it. How long will, you know, sometimes... The, the folk who, or, who are on the, the, the cable networks that are not pushing the big lie, they help the big lie by talking about, oh, how strong the other folk are, how strong they are. If you keep thinking about how strong the other folk are, you won't go into battle with them. Look, look oh. at D David and Goliath. If I say, how far David killed, you know, the, the, the folk that the folk around the base of the Republican Party, they aren't that strong. Dad, wait, wait, back up for a second, Dad. Are people really, Christian people, uh, some of the Southern Baptists you said, are they really putting Trump over Jesus, seriously? Yes. Well, wait yeah. a minute. I mean, th th I mean why, are we so, why are we so flabbergasted by this? I'm flabbergasted on that one. I mean, but, but, but look at it. Whenever you can use uh, the Bible to legitimate slavery and apartheid, there's, I mean, I'm not surprised at this. Uh, where we were viewed as a curse. And so now, you know, you have to look at who makes the values. By which values are we using to really gauge today's society? Um, I'm not surprised at this. How do we combat this? When we take our head out of the sand by thinking that if we ignore it long enough, it may go away. It's not going to go away. We must speak truth to power and the pulpit take that time to speak and to give a clear understanding of what is happening. Uh, we must have the spirit of Mordecai and call into, uh, call into question and to bring our people into remembrance that just because we made it this point doesn't mean that we don't still have a ways to go. Celebrate now, but let's prepare to work. Um, QAnon, there was a documentary that it was, it was started by a disgruntled white individual and they finally found him. He did not claim to be it, but by all indicators, he was the one that started it. And it was something that took on a life of his own that others started to claim it, uh, to take ownership of it because it was spewing out uh, a, hate person, uh, a hateful wish list 
of bringing into stuff that they want to see happening right now, getting yeah. back to the to the good old days. So how do we deal with this when we as a, when we as a people must realize it's only through a uh, unified effort. Uh, get involved, whether you be Democrat or Republican, just get involved and speak to this and let's try to bring some sanity into an insane discussion. Um, Evangel it's, it's sad to think that you have people in some of these churches that look like us that attend those evangelical uh, congregations who are beginning to take on those values. Knowing yes. well that it is not, that does not include us. Here's a thing from the 60s. You know, you could tell when somebody, uh, there was a test in terms of if you were able to be other people with the people, in terms of if you want to have blue eyes and, and press your hair, and, you know, you want to make your hair blonde or orange, um, you know, be proud of who you are and whose you are and, be, and have respect for yourself. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't expect anyone in Congress to look out for my interests if I'm not going to be man enough or responsible enough to speak for it myself. So, I mean, we got to, we got to come together on this and say, look, it's not over. It's just beginning. And so this is just, I'm not surprised. I mean, people call themselves Christian, but they also strung people up by trees, on trees. People call themselves Christian but they also failed to recognize one, this is one of the greatest massacres never spoken about 100 years ago in 1921 in Tulsa, Oklahoma, Black Wall Street. Well, Michael, with the situation, I, I, one thing I agree with, the other I, I, I don't agree. It is not going to be dependent upon the, the Black necessary upheaval white folks have to come to grips with the reality of what's going on. And if the ship goes down, they ain't going to be saved. The, 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 the thing that is missing is those persons who claim to be on the side of justice and right, and they have to speak up. They cannot always ask for, for the black folk to come together, have their revolt, and things are going to change. No, the Civil War didn't get excited and done and finished until the white folks started fighting each other. Now, I'm not advocating any fighting, but I'm advocating changing of attitudes. When, when you have, what, what astonished me was that the, the preachers in the Southern Baptist convention in, in the Southern Baptist Church are getting bombarded by their members about not being able to lift up QA9 and not being able to see what's happening to our nation and talk about my, Myanmar, what happens there, we can have it happen here. And the, the astonishing thing is when they ask them, they said, Trump is our savior. He's going to come and lead us and restore us to where we need to be. Now, if that is not, that, that's troubling. When, when you get that, and that's happening in about seven or eight states, and you and you got people like that Durham pillow man. <laughs> I wish he'd take one of his pillows and just go to sleep with it on himself and talk about fi finding ballots with, with bamboo <laughs> material in them. And make make them false, but you know, do you know how many people believe that? Oh, you you, you took a check of the Republican Party, and seventy percent of them believe whatever Trump says. The only good feature this week: Trump got removed from his podcast. His podcast was taken. He only had fifteen hundred people looking at his podcast, and it was a miserable failure. But he said he's coming back with something stronger. He's going to take to his rallies again when the weather warms up this summer. Now, well, you know, the, some way, something has to happen. Well, the good news about that is that, that, as you know, in politics, there's a line of people out there that are waiting for that spot. So the same ones that were pushing Trump and talking about Trump is the greatest are going to be the same ones fighting him for that spot in two years or whenever you know it happens. So that's, that's, that's one thing that's going to happen there. So I don't think 
he's going to be nearly as politically relevant or as politically successful as he would like to be because there's always somebody next next person up there's always somebody waiting to take that spot go ahead mike i'm sorry you gonna say something oh, no i'm just saying that i mean even with that um lyndon baines johnson said that if you want to keep the white man uh, in terms of keeping him suspicious of the black man uh just tell him that he's trying to take his job or trying to take uh, or make him feel as if his whiteness is, uh, no matter how poor he is, he's still better than that person. What we what we see now is just the indication of, of years of values that were preached in those pulpits. And QAnon is just a result of some of those values that they been, that, that they were able to buy into. Uh, I mean, just look at, just, just, I mean, some of the imagery that they use um, in terms of um, trying to purport um, this 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 fantasy this this that 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 that, that is not realistic. Um, even when Obama was elected, it wasn't uh, basically done by just the black vote, but it was a combination of all coming together. Because they said they're tired. I mean, just think about we're just coming out of a presidency, the Bush presidency that we thought was horrible until eight years later when Trump comes along. So, Man, you're absolutely right about that. Uh, you know, so the, the, speaking that into this uh, whole conversation that uh, it is when we have to bring, we have to continue to speak the truth to this situation. And you're right, uh, it's not that we're going down. If we go down, y'all going down. The whole thing is going down. Oh, oh, both going down. Yeah. The, so, the, the, the danger, comes in when, when you have one major cable station and a, two or three other minor ones that don't do anything but preach that wrong stuff. They took they took Tucker Carlson to court. And do you know how he got off? Because if he said, ain't nobody gonna believe Tucker Carlson, who's gonna, who's gonna, and do you know he got he got freed that way? They sued him. They said, you shouldn't believe, you shouldn't believe Tucker Carlson. Because it's for now, entertainment purposes. Yeah, but, but he's back on there saying that same kind of junk. And Fox says it all the time. And there's a couple of two, two or three other new cable uh, outlets and stations are, are saying it. And the people are even, and, but the, what gets me is, is that the, the major cable networks are continuing to give Trump coverage. One man said that a very close close associate of Trump said he thinks Trump has really lost it. He's lost his mind. He's losing his mind. He said, but Trump wants attention. And if you don't get attention, he'll he'll make up attention. That's why he's stirring up stuff because it's no, he knows that you all will cover him. And MSNBC and CNN will cover him. And so he wants total coverage because with his kind of personality, He's losing, it's his very good friend, one of his good friends said he's losing. So we think Trump is losing and he wants, he needs coverage. That's why he's talking about going back out in the field. He has to have the limelight and coverage to survive. Well, it's, it, it, is, it, it is apparent that he's an uh, egomaniac uh, because he makes up his own narrative and he, and he does not back down even when there are fact checkers about some of the things that he's saying. Um, you know, so I'm not surprised that a person like that, just think about how it, it, it's, he's acting like the spoiled child can't have his way. Even at the time of the inauguration, I'm not being gracious enough to stand there and see oh, the there thinking, he decided to leave and have his own rally and go on uh, down to, uh, to Florida, where he is now, um, that that shows you the type of person that he is. I mean, I'm not surprised by that, but but what I am surprised though are those persons who know that he's lying and continue to support his lies. When you have a, a Mitchell Connell, who led the opposition in terms of having a commission, a bipartisan commission, to look at the insurrection how it came about because he knew it was going to expose some things even last night that 
some of the subver some of the subversive things they were doing with the Department of Justice under Trump, that they were actually accessing phone records and personal records of those news reporters at the New York Times and various uh, news outlets that were speaking uh, of, out against his policies. So it it shows that uh, you know it was going to really expose a lot of a lot of stuff. But for Trump, in his world. Uh, you know, the basic thing is you've bankrupted two, maybe three casinos. Folk bring you money to a casino. How can you bankrupt, <laughs> how can you bankrupt a casino when folk are bringing you money? I mean, that just, and, uh, so do you, do, do you expect anything differently when it comes to running uh, a, an economy, a world economy? Uh, so, I mean, it's, it's just the lies he tells. It's like, um, a chicken in every pot, you know. Uh, everybody get a job, and there's a chicken in every pot. But how do we get there? I don't know. But that's 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 what we're gonna do. We're gonna make sure everybody has a chicken in every pot, which is, which is something he just puts out there in his world. He he, he, is, he is a major major grifter. You know, you know what a grifter is? A grifter is a big liar who does it to get money. You know what a carnival barker is? He will fool you on everything. Trump is one of the biggest grifters and strongest carnival barkers that the world has seen. He has fooled folk over and over and over again. And he keeps telling the same lie over and over. And Mitch McConnell, who condemned him one week, next week praised him, flip-flopping, the senator from or Lindsey Graham from South Carolina got up on the, in the floor and said he was do with him. Then last week, but he's got to be the lead the party. You got Ted Cruz. You got uh, Josh. Uh, what's Josh? Josh Cawley. Josh Cawley. And you, you, and you, Kevin McCarthy. and Kevin McCarthy. You got Kevin McCarthy had a cussing fight with him. A session with him when 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 the insurrection was taking place, then to ask him afterwards, he goes down and talks to Trump. And says, oh, it wasn't nothing. He's the leader of the party. Now those are the folk that are the ones. If they don't stand up and say something, if they would say something, things would be different. But they going down there, and whatever kind of Kool Aid he got them drinking, the AME Church needs to get a whole pot of that and spread it all around to get folk to believe that the church is going to be the strongest thing that they have. Because he has, he has convinced them, he has totally convinced them that the way for them to stay in power is to ride his coattails. And he hadn't won, the, he didn't win the presidency, he lost the Senate, he lost the House. But they still believe that he got enough of them, what, what they call, uh, high school trained blue collar workers around it. When I, we know what that means. That means that means we call them, we used to call them rednecks. Mm -hmm. And and that and, and that 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 that's what that's what he's got that's what they've got. And that and that's who is controlling what's happening in the Republican Party. The, the, the just high school the high school trained or lack of high school training to those who are a part of the belief of what Tucker Carlson and some others are saying, this is the age of the woke culture and they are replacing the, they are replacing the culture that made this nation great. And so they say, they say to them, them, them boys, them good old boys, that, 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 that they just got, just got the, the, the blue collars and the rednecks, saying to them, you're being replaced. So pardon that in what this is that's just an expression, not a meaning. But it it, it it is it is what's happening. They're saying they're losing the suburbs because the suburbs are now becoming more enlightened and more more diverse. But the places where, where are not is, is the places where you some folk don't even watch television that much. They get a radio station and they got one radio station. And they listen to that one, and that's it, bam. And, that's, and if it's in, 
It was anywhere in the in 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 the Midwest beyond Illinois. You in trouble. Montana, Idaho, North, South Dakota, you are in trouble when you get there. Wyoming, Wyoming doesn't have as many folk as Washington, D.C. and got two senators. <laughs> yep. And now how, how, how you how you gonna handle that? That's a mis, mismanagement of, of government. Wow. We we got a uh, we got a question too. Question is, do you think that there are people that are actually leaving church due to politics? Yes. Yes. Okay, then what, what is the what is the reason? How do we combat it? What do we do about it? That kind of thing. Well, I let daddy start, not finish, because I yes, yes, I hear that all the yeah, time. Yeah, they are leaving because they are they are listening to too much you said politics is killing the church. We got too much politics in the church. Now, what we need to do is to say to them that it is not politics is killing the church. It's the folk who are claiming to be politicians who are help killing the church. And the church is not made up of those who spout off that kind of politics. Don't let a little kind of division in terms of what you hear and what the politicians are saying drive you away from your church. That ought to drive you more to your church to understand that if we believe in Jesus Christ, we say there is power that will help us overcome whatever divisiveness they're trying to spread in the church. And politicians, the only way they only way we can stop politicians from, from being a part and politics being a part of the church is to make sure that the ones who are responsible in the church now don't get caught up in that political jumble. And, we're, and don't allow the membership in the church to consider the church leaders as being in bed, so to speak, in boat, so to speak, with the politicians. There ought to be the time when, as you said, Mike, you gotta speak, you gotta speak truth to power. And the truth we speak comes from Jesus Christ. And how we keep it from messing up the church, speak that truth, to those who want to make politics be a part of the church and those who are leaving, don't leave. You know, there's, what, what can one good man do? One good man can make it worse or one good man can make it better. If all the good men and all the good women stayed in church, evil wouldn't have a chance. But when you run, you make evil and win one more person, win one more time. But see, what you do, Joe, in terms of that question, when people leave the church, they're going somewhere else. And when that other place they go to, that's why you see the rise of the evangelicals, those persons who are buying into that narrative that uh, just preach Jesus. You know, we want to hear about politics. But if they, knew the, if they knew the gospel, the gospel was freeing that it was liberating in terms of coming about with speaking about a new ethic of love, putting love into action and calling into action uh, those things that are supposed to be in terms of a communal um, approach uh, for the betterment of all. Now, um, you know, you have those persons that have that, they use that, um, that excuse. Um, I, don't, I, I don't go to church to hear politics, but that was that that is in terms of the history of our church or where we were able to discuss freely to discuss and to be able to know what is happening in the community and how it affects and how it pertains to us that's how you see the rise of uh, of those other places of those mega churches well they put a muzzle on the black church of saying if you speak then you may lose your tax exempt your 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 nonprofit status because you're not supposed to speak that way but then turn a blind eye to those other places where they, they are, you, we, we just saw they openly endorsed Donald Trump, spoke about that, his policies. But you have, sometimes it's an inside job on us. You know, I, I like to watch Django. <laughs> I hate, I, there's one character I hate, but I love to watch him. And you know who it is? Steven. Steven. The butler to Steven. Steven, would play, would play the role as if, I mean, just play the role, but when he'd go by closed doors, he was pulling the strings. 
And he was just, it's just that you have a lot of Stevens out there that as long as, as long as it doesn't affect my well being, I'm going to continue to ride this thing. But if you, if you make one move that's going to affect my well being, I'm going to tell, you know, I'm going to end it. So we have a, we, you know, we still haven't learned how to work together, be cohesive because uh, we just, we, we, we buy into the American dream, which for many it becomes a nightmare. And, and while we talk about the church and politics, what people have to understand is while, while Jesus wasn't out there <laughs> advocating for you to vote for a particular candidate, Jesus preached politics. Yes. Because anytime you, he talked against the um, Pharisees and the Sadducees and the prevailing religious party and, and um, those things of that nature, that's political. So he was preaching politics as well. So I don't know why people have have a struggle with politics in the church. And you have to speak on stuff, Mike. You're right to, to make stuff better. I mean, there's a shout out to uh, our bishop, Bishop Reginald T. Jackson. There's a rally going on next week. Um, I'll give you the particulars of it in a moment, but the rally is about just that, uh, against that those bills that uh, were passed in, in Georgia that specifically limit voting. And then there's another one, Mike, going on I want to say June 16th in Washington, D.C., a big rally going on uh, as well to, to be able so we can pass um, the nationwide bill that will be able to offset all these other bills. But we have to do something and say something. We have to. And, and I think you're right. We were taught you can't talk about politics or you'll lose your 501c3 status, but everybody else is doing it. But think about it this way. Who do you think the politicians carry to, uh, uh, carry favor to? those larger congregations that those persons are now moving to. And what do you think? Human nature. You know, we get, we get souped up on that in terms of having uh, the, 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 the ear of the politician because you represent so many persons. You know, so it, it's, 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 it, it, it's, a, it's an irony of ironies there. Where persons leave, they say we speak too much about politics here, but go to a place that is involved in uh, involved in a political process that may not benefit his or her community. So, um, it, it, yeah, that's an interest. Thank you, Marquita, for that question. And, and I'm going to put and please keep the questions coming. The rally is going to be um, across uh, from the um, across the state of Georgia. It's going to be at the Georgia State Capitol Tuesday, June 8th at 12 noon. So I'll put it in the comments. But if you're gonna have a rally, make sure you got folk at the rally, okay? Um, you know, make sure you 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 have your your talking points at the rally. Um, I mean, what I mean by that is that sometimes persons call for a rally, and you know, it's just it's 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 anything but a rally. Uh, it becomes a political agenda. Uh, it becomes a personal thing. Uh, make sure it's something uh, that you have really uh, thought out as well as you have your points that are there. I know that's not going to happen there, but I, I think a lot of times, you know, you know what I mean. You know, you have persons that just want to, you know, let's not, let's not do it because we want to be on TV. Let's make it, let's, let's do it because we want to make a change. Um, we have, especially on the college campus here, you have a lot of rallies going on. And it's just, Sometimes just shake your head. What is this about? You know, what is this one about? Uh, so it, it is, it, I think it's time now that we have to have some activism um, and to make it, uh, and, and not just do it because, let's not do it just when the camera is running, but let's continue to work it uh, to show that uh, we are committed uh, to bringing about effective change. It's, it's definitely necessary now because these, these laws are, are, I mean, just ridiculous, just crazy, just absolutely crazy. Um, you know, I think it is a good thing for uh, churches to meet um, and just to talk about it in a casual setting of those things that are affecting the community. But what is our community now? Let me give you a point. Here in Chapel it. Hill, we no longer have a community. No. Nope. We're dispersed. And so uh, this used to be a church where you can walk to, to attend. Now, um, we, I just received an email from a developer down in Atlanta that wants to buy our land. 
you know, hmm. because, I mean, I'm from, where we Atlanta? Are. If from Atlanta, they want to buy our land here because it's all about one color now, green. We, we suffer behind that when we take the quick bucks, but we don't realize what we are giving up in the process. So, I mean, community, what is, I think the first thing we have to do is we have to be like Nehemiah. We have to rebuild, we, we have to be about building the community, not just the walls, but the community. Ezra tells us, you know, you got to talk about where you're from, your pride. I mean, we need an Ezra spirit and a Nehemiah spirit to come about and to help us to see that, uh, you know, only when we work together and when we, when, we, when we come together, not just as one, but as a many to come together in this collective, that we can change this. Think about it. Um, recently, it was it was in the paper yesterday. One gentleman gave a gift of several million dollars uh, to the school, and it was his opinion that caused them to rescind the offer of tenure uh, to the woman coming to uh, UNC. And in his, in his, I don't know, maybe he was naive. He said he didn't think his opinion would sway the board that much in terms of how <laughs> he felt about her. I said, now, what kind of mess is that? So it's stuff like that, that we have to, that, that we have to be aware of, that, you know, they're playing for keeps. But no, what, what that was, was this, Mike. That was the realization that the opinion that I did not want to get out got out so now i'm trying to do some damage control yes by saying oh i didn't know you knew it, it's dog whistle language they know doggone well what what they're doing when they say stuff there's certain little and now they call them triggers there's certain triggers that they say and and um some people those fox hosts master this stuff triggers that they use to get people riled up and that's what happened to him and he's just now backtracking because he knows it got out. Uh, you know, when you when you look at uh, when Danny was speaking about supporters of Trump, the saddest thing was that the that the increase of black men who supported Trump, yeah, of buying into an image <laughs> that did that that never belonged to us. Well, that Dad, you remember the days. Um, Mike, you talked about it a minute ago, I believe. You remember the days, Dad, when the thing was people were out there trying to press their hair and, and process it uh, and conk mm -hmm. their hair, and so they could so that they wanted to look white. They wanted their hair to look like white folks' hair. That is, and unfortunately, that's what's happening right now. <laughs> you see, it 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 it, it ain't it hadn't ceased. It had some. Walk down the street and see how many black women got weaves in their hair and hanging it down two feet long when they don't have six inches on their head. Amen. Now, so it, it ain't changed. Who who has who has the long hair? Trying to mimic the kind of culture. And and that's that's the part that really is discriminating and destroying us. When, 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 you, when you find and TikTok and all this other stuff, white folks doing it and, and now black folk trying to get in and mimic and do all this. What, what I tell you, social media has been one of the best and one of the worst things that has happened in the last 40 years. It, it has caused many good things, but it has created many mountains that we can't cross. And one of the things that we, 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 don't, we don't take care of is the fact that you can never lose your identity. You can never forget. And uh, what, did, this, did this, this basketball coach tell me he's so happy he married a white woman? What what's, was that in? Hubert Davis here at University of well, and that, why is he so happy he married a white woman? It proves diversity. And so, but no, it proves that he's trying that until, until until that kind of stuff changes. And and, all right, and, and look and see how many multi-millionaire basketball players 
to white wives. Dad, did, did you hear the latest? Did, did you hear? Did you hear Michael who Kim Kardashian is dating now? Who? If I'm not mistaken, it was rumored, I believe, that Kim Kardashian was dating Van Jones. I what? wouldn't I wouldn't doubt it. Let me let me look it up, double check it. I would, but now you, you see what's happening. How many, how many millionaire athletes have white wives? About I bet you about 90% of them. And for him to announce he's so glad that the school hired him, he's so glad this, and he's so glad he got a white wife. It's it's speculation that they're that they're dating. It's it's speculative at this point, but yes, yeah, so yeah, I mean and do you know where you know, do you know where Van Jones came from? Hmm. Van Jones came from Lane College in Tennessee. His grandfather was a CME president, a preacher of Lane College, a CME school. And he left there and he went to huh? an HBCU. Yeah, and, and he left there and went to Harvard and got his training at Harvard, got his law degree because he's a lawyer, but he lives. But it is in California and somewhere else. I would not be surprised. I but am not you, surprised you missed, at all. You missed a major piece. What's that? He was married to the niece of Jimmy Carter. Oh, Lord have mercy. <laughs> Y'all fact check me on that. So that's the shot thing. But, you know, that whole thing, there was, you know, we really don't know what we are to be because we're so confused um, and trying to be accepted. We, we, we spend more on hair care products. We spend more on stuff that just, that makes no sense. I know it's being recorded, but uh, there's a gentleman that likes to make suits and he plays on our, on our egos, making us look look fashionable and, and he's getting paid, we're not. As you know, I decided, no, let's 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 not let's not uh buy into let's not buy into that narrative that they want us to buy into. Is that that is not germane to my people. Uh you 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 are right. Um in terms there was a movie that they would show us at WG Pearson. Um, about black pride. It was narrated by Bill Cosby. And it would talk about the roles of black actors in Amos and Andy, mm -hmm. the Three Stooges, um, images. It was something, I, I cannot recall the name of that movie, but they would show it to us in class. And especially in first grade, we were laughing at some of the things, we were just laughing. And the teacher, Ms. Patillo, turned the uh, projector off and turned the lights on and said, do you not understand what, what, what is being said in this? How you're being portrayed? You're laughing at these, at these things, how they think that you're supposed to be. Big eyes, always scared, uh, not really understanding what's going on. Have pride in yourself. That was shown during Black History Week. <laughs> Black History Week, Joe. Uh, Black History Week. And so I think about that movie and think about uh, the, you know, the message that was there of finding pride in who you are and whose you are. Black Wall Street was a result of persons coming together in an area in Indian territory accepted by uh, the nation. Uh, the tribal nation to be able to put together a place where they can work together. That was pride. Um, even in the city of Durham of having uh, their own Black Wall Street, working together, realizing that uh, we must turn the dollar over four or five times, if not more than that in our community in order to rebuild our community. Here's the, here's the thing, I just hope and pray that Black Wall Street would, no longer, would, would, would not just become a historical marker where we ever so often come together like the geese in Kierkegaard to come and talk about how great it is to be a goose. We walk down together, flap our wings and honk about the great goose and how we ought to fly. But then when it's over, 
we all turn around instead of flying, we walk back to our separate barnyards. I just hope it is the, it, it just does not go into that in terms of just being a day of recognizing it and uh, just having a historical marker, but let us learn that we did achieve, we did create, we did have. Every time we did it, they that, that, that Tulsa is not the only place. There are over 30, if not 40 instances of similar massacres, burnings of where people of color came together to work together. You know, think about this. Chitlins are expensive. There ain't no nothing about no chitlins until, <laughs> until we started putting that together, seasoning them and selling them. Man, come on now. Who uh, creative? We take the leftovers and make a delicacy out of. So that tells you the creativity of your people, of our people. Have you ever, have you priced how much oxtails and, oh. and, neck, bones, and neck bones cost now? Oh, you can't. Well, you, you, ooh, they, Lord have mercy. You used to give them away, but now you can't buy oxtails and neck bones. Can't find them. They got them and gone. Got them priced up to the roof. Then you, you see it, that, that's what we survived, bro. That's what we lived on. Sold them by the bag. Oxtail, yes, you know, they, they sold them by the bag. You know, you. I remember as a little boy seeing them in, in the market by the bag. Now, you can't get them. Can't find them. And so, I mean, that right there is, uh, you know, that tells you about our people, um, of what we're able to do and how we're able to survive. So, I think we just have to have to, you know, wake that up again. Yeah. Yes, and, yes, you know, yes. Let us know that we are somebody, and 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 we, we we are we are a gift and not a curse. And so I mean that's that's Joe. Uh, you know what's that movie uh, with Cedric the Entertainer in it? Uh, uh, Be cool, where he has a line in there. He says that how can you denigrate a man's culture? You know when, they, when we add so much to your to your uh, everyday living. You know, the best you could do is just say thank you. Uh, I think that's that's a, that's what America needs to do to our community. Just say thank you for how much we've added uh, value to your to to this nation. Well, uh, and um, and and I would be remiss if I didn't shout out uh, Reverend Robert uh, Turner too, who's at the church at our church in uh, Vernon. Vernon AME Vernon Church is doing a great job at Vernon. Doing a great job. Uh, representing us very well. Shout out to that young brother, uh, Dad. You remember him? You know his dad real well. You remember him when he was? When he remember was a little, him as a little boy. Remember him as a little boy and, and know his daddy and his uncles. Great family. Very, great. very strong. His father's a very strong, very good A and B. Oh yeah, great man. He's a great man. So shout and out see, to them. And see, that's the thing we have to do in terms of our own church. Uh, say that no, these are the things that which we have done. And, and we can continue to do that. That church was the focal point, a, ga a rallying point of making yep. sure that that story is told. I mean, so, uh, you know, yeah, commend them for that as well as for those, for those persons keeping the narrative alive of that massacre of, uh, Wall Street, of Black Wall Street in Tulsa. It, was a, it wasn't a riot, it was a massacre. You know, people, uh, that's like people said, slaves. No, we were enslaved. We were doctors. We were, we were, we were teachers. We were, we were husbands. We were wives. We were mothers. You know, we were enslaved, not slave. We were enslaved. So this, I mean, it talks about the power of language, the power of language. Well, I think in the words of the, of that television show, I believe it was Carol Burnett, Mike at the end. When they say it's so nice we've had this time together. <laughs> yeah. yeah. As, as our time is nearing the end, um, I'll close out with my comments and then Mike, and then of course dad will close us all out. Want to thank everybody for seriously for watching us today. Uh, we couldn't do this without you guys. And thank you those who have shared. Please like and please share this post. Even those who watch it back again um, and who watch this broadcast. Because while you may see um, not a lot of people viewing live, Afterwards, hundreds of people will view this. So please share it uh, so it can go on and, and pass our little universe into the broader universe. And Mike, I'll make you laugh real quick. You talk about chitlins. Um, I remember a line from Casino 
when uh, Joe Pesci said, and, and the bosses are all sitting there smoking uh, their denobles and and eating, you know, uh, safri, fried pig's guts. So understand, we, you know, they have made that in, into a delicacy, but nobody would have ever known about it were it not for us uh, making most out of the scraps. And I pray, if necessity is indeed uh, the mother of invention, that our necessity for each other right now, our need for each other right now, will cause a greater outpouring of support for one another in our communities. And I wanna thank you all for helping spur some good, uh, good trouble and some good thought. Mike. And I wanna thank my friends that I see down in Georgia and Alabama that are watching, uh, some who attended Alabama State and they, they make comments, I thank you for that. Uh, my closing thought is uh, shout out to uh, Stephen A. Smith for calling out, calling it for what it is on yesterday yeah. in terms of the opportunities being afforded to those, um, you know, persons of privilege versus those who have the experience and who are persons of color. Um, a graduate of Winston-Salem State University and a proud supporter of the HBCU experience. Um, I think that instead of tearing somebody down, Let's build them up, support them. I may not agree with everything that he may say, but I'm going to support that brother because he's in the limelight and, let, and, and how hard it is to, 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 to be able to, you can't please everybody, but shout out to him. And more importantly, um, to, to my many friends out there, uh, we've had to deal with uh, some situations of people who we thought were with us but we're not with us. That Trump election taught us a lot, especially when you I went to high school in Birmingham, Alabama. Lord have mercy. Can, uh, can, I, can I jump in? You know what, Mike, I, I'm not gonna lie to you, man. I, I'll just say this. My, my 30 year high school reunion is this year. I'm not going. And, and the reason I'm not going to it is because I'm, I see some of the people I was friends with in, in school and their views they wouldn't want to see me right now. They, they don't want to see the Joe of 2021 with, with some of their views that I see on Facebook and boldly talking this and talking that. So I'm just going to excuse myself from any reunion of, of Wolfson Senior High School at that one because this ain't going to happen. But I'm sorry, I had to say that. All right. It's like, I think it's Langston Hughes that says, we wear the mask. And I think now we're taking the mask off. And For real. They're, they're seeing what it, we do have a voice. And I think... Uh, you know, let's support that brother for speaking for what is real. Think about this. Uh, Coach K retired and they already had his person in the wings. 33 years old. No coaching experience. But amen. That's that's privilege. As oh, well. and, and look at say, talk about look, Brad Stevens again. Remember Brad that one? Stevens now in uh, the president of basketball operations in the NBA right. for Boston Celtics. Uh, I think we all have a connection to Boston going to school there. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Uh, so, um, and now there's, you know, as they have the Rooney rule in football where they have to include uh, African-American or person of color in the interviewing process but they would circumvent that to say, just because uh, we interview doesn't necessarily mean that we're gonna hire you. Not at all, absolutely. So um, again, shout out to those who speak truth to power, call it what it is. And can you imagine if, if your major athletes uh, would boycott or speak out, uh, what effect that would have on terms of the money that the NBA or the NFL uh, you know, what they earn. And lastly, um, you know, let's support one another and, uh, and be involved. I think the, the, to, to sum up my feeling, our feeling, never forget who we are. When, when God made us or God made me, God was at his best. I'm not going to try to mimic nor match, but make the best of what I am and who I am. I appreciate where I came from. I appreciate who I am. And I pray that those who are with me when I get 
anywhere I never will forget. And I will always, my job is to bring along those with me who get caught in the mud of complacency and help us to lift each other up to a standard of joy and peace and sustaining power politically, economically, socially, educationally. But it cannot be done until we lock arms together and pull together and lift each other together. And so I am not lifted until all of my brothers and sisters who come from where we know we've been. We can't make it until we all have arrived and made it. So there is no hill in the plain field of life. All the hills are down. There are no different starting lines in the field of life. We all start from the same place with the same opportunities, with the same joys, with a level playing life field. And when that happens, I pray that God's grace will sustain us and never let us forget who we are, what we mean, and how God has blessed us. So thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for our discussion. Give us strength so that we may never forget who we are because you made us who we are. Never forget how strong you keep us. But most of all, never let us forget that we belong to you and our task is to serve you and to please you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thanks, everybody. And maybe before we go off, we can get Steve to uh, jump on camera real quick. Steve, you want to jump on camera real quick and wave? Our yeah, brother, I'm right here. Just jump on the camera and wave, Stephen. I'm right here. There he is. Thanks for joining us, Steve. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Okay. We're going to get Steve on the broadcast one day. Oh, come on.